Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this right here is one of the more stereotypical visions of what Oumuamua might look like. If you don't remember what this was, this was the first ever interstellar object detected approximately a year ago and this particular object then kind of made a lot of people confused because it seemed that it was actually accelerating slightly. Now, this usually happens to comets, usually happens to things that start kind of emitting a lot of particles from the surface, and those particles can actually give a comet, for example, a little bit of acceleration. But when we looked at this object, we didn't really see anything. And so for this reason, a lot of theories started to fly around, including, I guess, the most famous one by Professor Loeb, who suggested that maybe this was actually some sort of an extraterrestrial sail that was lost by the aliens a long time ago. Now, this is maybe a little bit too far-fetched, and um, like so many other people, I do have a, a lot of problems with this particular hypothesis, but nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that as of 2019, uh, specifically in February of 2019, there still hasn't really been a good explanation to why this object accelerated the way it did, and why it was able to slightly change its trajectory without really showing any signs of emissions. Now, um, the most obvious assumption was that, well, maybe it was emitting something that wasn't really what normal comets emit. Maybe there was this unusual water vapor that we've never seen before, or maybe it was just too small to see. But there was actually a paper published only a few weeks ago that speculates about something that I personally never thought about before, and actually it makes tons and tons of sense. A way better theory than the whole solar sail thing. Let's get to the actual paper and let's talk about what they're proposing. And when I say they, it's actually one person, Amaya Moro Martin, um, who wrote this paper um, on February 13, 2019. And uh, the paper is in the description below, but I'm going to give you the summary here. What Amaya realized is that when we were analyzing what's happening to Muamua, we made an assumption. And the assumption was that, well, we thought that the mass of this object and more specifically, the density of this object was around the same as a typical comet, which is usually about one to maybe three grams per centimeter cube. So in a sense, uh, this object that you see right here in Universe Sandbox has uh, its density relatively similar to a density of a typical asteroid or a comet. Uh, the reason why it's one to three is because we're not really sure what it's made out of. But that's a really big assumption. That's an assumption that we actually thought it was a comet or an asteroid. But then again, that was a really big assumption. And so in this particular paper, there is no assumption of its actual mass. As a matter of fact, the only assumption that's made is we think we might know its size. And that means that, well, if we know its size, we don't really know what density it has. And so Amaya decided to analyze this from a perspective of, let's see what we have here. Let's try to work backwards. And by knowing the acceleration of this object, and also by knowing, knowing its size, uh, we can actually try to calculate its density. And this is exactly what was done in this paper. And the result is that, well, this object doesn't have to be flat like a solar sail, and it doesn't really have to have any emissions like a comet, but it would still experience the same acceleration if it was very, very fluffy. In other words, if it was kind of like styrofoam, or if it was very, very, very low in density extremely porous, extremely empty on the inside, kind of like a three-dimensional snowflake. And that's exactly what this object uh, is described as in this paper. So I think we all know um, what typical snowflakes look like, but imagine if you were to take a bunch of water ice and you were to place it somewhere on the outskirts of the solar system or any star system and let it just stay there for a really, really, really long time. And over time, what is going to start happening to this ice is that it's actually going to start forming these fractals that you see right here. And they're not just going to be two-dimensional like uh, they are on Earth with snowflakes, and they're not going to be this small either. As a matter of fact, if you give it enough time, and here's actually a kind of an animation of what fractals look like if you have never seen this before, over time, they'll start growing larger and larger and larger, and they'll actually start growing in three dimensions and create these really large uh, fractal structures that are, well, literally three-dimensional snowflakes. And so this paper literally uh, suggests that what we just saw was 
a tremendously large three-dimensional snowflake that um, was not really emitting anything, was not any kind of a interstellar sail abandoned by aliens, but was a tremendously large fractal-like design that was kind of empty on the inside, but was probably made out of water or something. Actually, it doesn't even have to be water, it can be any kind of ice. But the idea of this being formed on the outskirts of a star system is very, very, very possible. Now, this Oumuamua snowflake would be extremely low in density. Uh, it's about 100 times less dense than the air itself. But it's actually not impossible. And uh, the math done in this paper suggests that it would be quite possible to create such a porous object if this ice, this material, was left kind of orbiting on the outskirts of a star system for a few thousands or maybe millions of years, and then somehow got kicked out of that star system and traveled all the way here to our solar system, and then we accidentally caught it. If this paper actually is correct, this suggests that we just discovered the biggest, most incredible looking snowflake we could ever imagine. But the fact that we were able to catch it also maybe suggests that these objects are quite common and could be all over the place in our own solar system as well. And the reason why this is maybe one of the best explanations so far is because it actually includes all of the things we know about the solar system. It includes the fact that we know that ices always sort of orbit on the outskirts and uh, can actually aggregate into these large ice structures. It also includes mathematics of fractals and how fractals form over time. And of course, it includes all of the materials and all of the formations of those materials that we have everywhere in the solar system and also everywhere in the galaxy. It also includes the idea of the formation of the star system or a solar system, where these ices often are found on the outskirts of star systems and can then actually escape the star system as planets kick them out. So there's a lot of theories that are basically brought together by this simple explanation. I personally am in love with this explanation, just the idea of having this huge snowflake, this incredibly large fractal flying through space and being caught by a telescope, that's mind-blowing, that's much better than this whole um, extraterrestrial sail explanation, which kind of didn't really make sense, there's a lot of problems with that idea, but this here is brilliant and I love how elegant it is in its presentation and also the mathematics. Whether this actually finally solves what Oumuamua is once and for all is another question. This object is really far away right now. Uh, this is kind of where Oumuamua is located right now. So basically past the orbit of Saturn, kind of on the way to where Uranus would be and also very highly inclined uh, compared to the rest of the planet. So it would be very difficult to reach. The mission to Oumuamua would be pretty cool, but it needs to happen relatively soon if we were to ever catch this object. So we don't really know if we'll ever make it there, and we don't really know if we'll see more of these objects anytime soon. But for now, I'm just going to imagine that everything that was mentioned in this paper is correct, because I would like to believe that Maybe, just maybe, these fractals and these humongous snowflakes are a thing out there. And maybe, just maybe, we'll find more relatively soon. Until then, well, let's wait for more papers about Oumuamua. So far, I think this is my favorite. And if you want to read more about it, check it out in the description below. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you learned a little bit more about space and sciences from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. Thank you to all of you who've supported me on Patreon. It helps me tremendously. And because this is basically my primary career now, it's sometimes a little bit unpredictable with YouTube. You know, it doesn't really always treat uh, all videos equally. Anyway. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.